Good evening, folks. Uh, we're going to get started at 6.05 now. Uh, thanks for joining us again for this 30% uh, uh, design virtual public meeting uh, of the South Attleboro Station and accessibility improvements. I um, want to start off by saying thank you to everyone that's able to join us today, uh, in particular to the delegation and the elected folks who we've been working very closely with um, uh, to get to this point. Uh, we are very pleased to be able to have this presentation for you tonight. Um, uh, in particular, I'd uh, like to thank uh, Representative uh, uh, Senator uh, uh, Paul Feeney, um, Representative Hawkins, uh, Senator uh, uh, Becca Rausch and others uh, uh, that have been very instrumental in, in uh, throughout this process. So thank you so much. Um, now I'd like to quickly just um, uh, bring uh, Representative Hawkins uh, to the floor to say a few words on behalf of the delegation. We'll get started with the presentation and then uh, have some uh, uh, questions and answers for folks. I can't see my face. Oh, there we go. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Angel. Um, I can't say enough thank you to everything that you've done and particularly the people who've worked with us. This has been a couple of years that we've been talking to you about this and I wanna thank State Rep. Stephen Howard from Seekonk, uh, State Rep. Uh, Barrows from uh, Mansfield, uh, past State Rep. Betty Poirier from North Attleboro and current State Rep from North Attleboro, Adam Scanlon, uh, Senator Paul Feeney and Senator Rausch. Uh, everybody, everybody has been worked very hard on this. Uh, I also want to thank some other people that have been uh, involved in this discussion, which is the Attleboro City Council and John Case, who is the developer for the Kate, for the uh, Colvin Street parking lot and Double ACS, who is broadcasting this on local cable TV. Uh, I, I, I think the thing that, of course, happened this week was the repairs to the to the overpass, and I want to acknowledge that the, uh, MBTA is doing an awesome job for a restructure that, that uh, at some point is going to be replaced to be so diligent about keeping it safe for everybody. And I think the biggest thing that I want to share that people may not know is how good MBTA is at responding to ridership concerns. Uh, I'm thinking of a presentation that Angel put on last week uh, about the uh, service changes to do with the pandemic. And there had to be a hundred people on that. And it was real clear to me, I, I couldn't stay as long as he did, but it was real clear to me that every last person was gonna to get to speak with somebody from MBTA about their concerns. So what this presentation about oh, is, not, is not all the thank yous. Oh, I, I had to do that. Angel told me not to, but I had to do that. Uh, what this presentation is about is the improvements to the South Attleboro commuter rail station. Uh, these are, are improvements will absolutely transform the way we use public transportation and as real estate changes so quickly and with the pandemic around Attleboro and work habits change uh, this is going to make a real difference to our city and to our region so thank you so much thank you representative for the kind words uh, but can't take all the credit. Uh, it's a whole team that, that's able to pull this together. Uh, and I'm just uh, happen to be a very fortunate individual to, to work with them. So uh, I gotta, gotta share the wealth uh, with all the work that they do. Uh, I'd like to now turn it over to uh, to Nayan uh, Nadu uh, from our project team, who's a project manager uh, for the South Auto Rail Station project. Uh, Nayan. Thanks, Angel. So Joe Nolan will be starting the presentation. Joe? Joe, I believe you're on mute. Leave it to the outreach guy to have this thing muted. Um, I just want to remind everybody that this is a Zoom meeting, which we're all very familiar with. We we hope in the near term we can have real meetings out with the public as this project evolves. Uh, this meeting will be recorded tonight. So if you're uncomfortable being recorded, you can sign off. But if you don't uh, speak or, or uh, raise your hand, you won't be recorded. So uh, this will be recorded and posted on the MBTA website for South Attleboro Station. Uh, in the near term after it's made accessible. After we go through the presentation, there'll be a Q&A session. If you have questions that come to your mind, if you look at the, direct your attention to the bottom of your screen, if you move your cursor, there's a Q&A button. You can type in questions there, and then when the presentation is done, we will answer all the questions as they come in. We also, when we get to the Q&A, we'll have the option of people raising their hands and we'll cover those uh, processes again then. With that, I'll turn it over to the MBTA project manager, Nayan Nadu. Thanks, Joe. So again, my name is Nan Adu. I'm the MBTA project manager. So part of this project team, we have the MBTA team, Michael Baker, who's the lead consultant, along with City Point Partners, who's the outreach consultant, who's been helping us with community outreach. Next slide. 
So I'm going to hand this over to Douglas Peterson, who's the Michael Baker project manager, to go through the details of the presentation. Thanks, Naya. Um, so we're just going to quickly run through the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, we're going to talk about the project goals and the project scope, uh, review the work to date um, and ongoing work, uh, talk about the existing conditions at the station, give you an overview of the project and talk about some of the project details. Uh, we're going to review the project phasing and the schedule, uh, review the cost estimate and the budget, talk about public outreach, uh, next steps for the project, and have a question and answer session at the end. So talk quickly about some of the project goals. Um, first off, uh, you know, we want to upgrade the accessibility for the station. Uh, we're going to achieve that in a couple different ways. Uh, primarily, um, we're going to have two new fully accessible train platforms uh, for level boarding. Um, we're also going to do improvements to the parking lots and the pedestrian features, including new walkways, uh, relocated accessible parking spaces, uh, new ramps and crosswalks. In addition to that, we want to have improved customer access. Um, so we're going to have a new pedestrian bridge uh, connecting the west lot uh, to the commuter rail platforms. Uh, we're also going to have a, a new connection um, from the inbound platform to Colvin Street. Uh, we're also um, going to have new bus bays uh, to connect to area service uh, providers, including uh, Ripta and Gatra. And lastly, um, we want to have upgraded security and safety features for the station. Uh, and this includes upgraded lighting, fencing, security cameras, communication systems, and fire protection systems. So looking at some of the work that's been done to date for the project, uh, we've completed an environmental checklist and a project notification form. Uh, we've been coordinating with Amtrak on the, some of the early uh, field work we've done at the station. Uh, and we're also uh, coordinating with them on a, a variance application. Uh, so we have completed the survey for the project. We've done subsurface investigations, including borings. Uh, we've done some utility research, uh, met with utility uh, uh, providers. Uh, we've done a hazmat survey of the station. We've also completed the 15% concept design with the MBTA and the 30% concept, 30% uh, design for the project. Um, in addition to that, we've been um, doing a lot of stakeholder coordination, including uh, meeting with GAPTA and RIPTA. Um, we met with some of the private property uh, uh, adjacent owners, including um, John Case, uh, Unison Realty, Bristol Place. Uh, we've also been coordinating with Amtrak, as I mentioned, um, coordinating with the city of South Attleboro, uh, MassDOT, and Keolis. With that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Karen Broslowski, who's our lead architect. Uh, she's going to talk about a little bit about the existing conditions at the station and some of the uh, proposed station features. So just to put this into context, if we're uh, bird's eye view looking down, the purple stripe in the middle is the station and it runs directly under Newport Avenue, which is running uh, from the bottom of the screen south to north at the top. And it's surrounded by uh, the box stores on the east side of the uh, uh, Newport Avenue, Market Basket, Home Depot. On the west side uh, is some uh, light industrial and some general residential. And to the south of the site is general residential. Uh, there are a couple of parking lots at the station. The west parking lot you see labeled here is owned by the MBTA, and the east parking lot is leased by the MBTA. Next, please. So zooming in a little more, you see New Newport Avenue. If you were coming to the site from the south, you would uh, come from Newport Avenue, take a right onto the uh, access road, go around past the east parking lot and then uh, to the west parking lot. And if you're coming from the north, you would take a right onto the access road and, and come in um, to the, to, around to the west parking lot. Uh, you can see the parking lots here. They look pretty full. They are uh, pretty full by seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, that was pre-COVID. Um, and uh, when you get there, you are going to the platforms by a variety of paths the uh, long ramp that has the arrow, purple arrow on it, that will take you from grade up and across the existing bridge and down to the inbound platform. And then there's a set of stairs in that vicinity as well. And then there's a couple of other lower ramps that take you up to the outbound platform. Uh, 
and a general overview of what the improvements will be. There'll be work on the west parking lot that we'll get into. Some uh, the bus stops will be brought closer to the station. There are two long yellow stripes here are the platforms, which will be new and uh, be raised to be a high platform. There'll be a new uh, set of ramps that takes you to the pedestrian bridge, a new bridge, which will take you over to the uh, inbound side and three elevators that you see in red. And then a series of shorter ramps and some steps that will take you up to the platforms. And the blue stripes are indicating some stairs from the platforms up to the new pedestrian bridge. Joe's gonna talk a little bit about what the site work improvements will be for the project. All right, thank you, Karen. So some key highlights for a civil site, starting with the east lot. Um, <clears throat> there's gonna be a new crosswalk uh, coming from the east lot uh, to the east end of the platforms and um, a couple of new accessible ramps in that vicinity. Um, you can see the bulk of the work's really on the west lot, but there is you know a little bit going on in the edge of the east lot there. As you continue west, um, you know, looking at the access road, that road's gonna get repaved, um, some new, new striping. And then as you get on the other side of Newport Ave, the access road's gonna have another improvement to a crossing there as well. Um, and that's kind of where the RIPTA bus stop will be, as well as the, the Gatra bus stop. So RIPTA will be able to um, accommodate two bus bays or two buses, and Gatra will accommodate uh, one bus. Um, the West Lot's going to have approximately 330 spaces uh, when all is said and done, and the East Lot will have 208 spaces. One of the major um, improvements will be taking the accessible spaces from the east side of the parking lot and putting them closer down to the southern portion near the bus uh, berths and the new crossings and close to the elevators and, and much closer to the platforms. Uh, so that's a pretty significant improvement. There'll be 15 accessible spaces along that uh, southern uh, curb line. The other major kind of change here is at the, uh, the south edge of the west lot, those are where the two access points are today, for, uh, vehicles to enter the lot. Um, that's a pretty congested area now, so we're going to close that off and, and allow the buses to get to, to park there and move that uh, entrance to the west side of the lot. Um, typical other improvements are gonna include new, new granite curbing, you know, the parking lot itself getting repaved, new concrete sidewalk, uh, as Doug mentioned earlier, new site lighting and, and perimeter fencing to help with security um, and, and some new landscaping as well. I think there's a couple of existing trees that'll stay but for the most part, there'll be you know, some, some low maintenance um, landscaping improvements as well. Uh, one final thing is there's an emergency egress path proposed to the east of Newport Avenue. That'll be off of the inbound platform. And again, only used during an emergency situation. So that'll be you know, primarily locked uh, unless there's a, an emergency and, and some type of a push bar mechanism or something similar to, to allow folks to get off the platform and get to a, a safe location. Um, so with that, I think that covers the, the civil highlights and I'll turn it back to Karen for architecture. Sure, I'm gonna highlight some of the uh, architecture features and uh, accessibility improvements at the station. At the top of this diagram, you can see the driveway coming out of the east parking lot. And as Joe mentioned, there are some improved crosswalks there. It'll take you right to the east end of the platform and you can go up uh, ramps right onto the platform from that side. And from the west, uh, there will be new ramps going up. There are three elevators, which are pass through elevators uh, and a ramp coming down, a new ramp coming down to the inbound platform. You're seeing a lot of roofs here because we're providing a lot more coverage on the platform. And the ramps and the pedestrian bridge and the uh, stairways will be totally enclosed, which will improve um, uh, keeping people away from the weather elements. In addition to this, we're gonna have covered bike storage and uh, the, the bus shelters themselves will also be incorporated into the design. If you're looking down the platform, this is looking towards the new pedestrian bridge and the new uh, and uh, underneath the Newport Avenue uh, road. 
that goes over the station. Uh, these are showing how much enclosure there is and ramp coverage. This is 30% design, so these are still under development. We're trying to um, look at how to make them uh, modular and uh, easy to uh, um, build and, um, and, and uh, simplify the structures. Again, we're, we're under study on these canopies. This is showing another, another way of doing them. Um, and the diagram at the bottom would be if you were standing in the west parking lot looking back towards the station, uh, that would be the entrance to the station. So you'll see um, the, the uh, ramps coming up from the bus shelter, uh, from across the road, and up onto the platforms. I'm going to talk about some phasing that we've thought of. Uh, this is still preliminary. Again, it's 30% design, and it's one way of, of building this so that the, the project could remain open, uh, the station could remain open, but phased. When a contractor comes on board, they will look at the phasing and uh, potentially will come up with another way of phasing this, but uh, we just wanted to run through this to, to show that it could be done. In all cases, uh, whatever isn't touched it will be um, need to be accessed um, while the station is open. So the red stripes on this diagram are the existing stairs, which are uh, at the platforms. They aren't in use, so a good way to start this is to take those down and to do some moving of some overhead catenary, which would be in the way of the construction, and relocation of some Amtrak communication uh, huts. Uh, again. The uh, bridges, the ramps that will not be demolished first will be protected and uh, remain access to the station. Next, please. So uh, one way of doing this would be to start at the uh, east end and to demolish the platforms on the east end while the west end remains open and the access to the west end remains open. So in blue, it's showing that the east end would be demolished and rebuilt up to high platform level, and a series of new platform ramps could be installed. Next. After those platforms and ramps are installed, new pedestrian bridge could be built, and the elevators that are associated with that bridge would, could be put in as well as a set of stairs going down to the east platform, the new the east platform, and a temporary ramp from the uh, west parking lot area to the east platform. After this, the east end could open, and uh, then we could start to take down the ramps uh, th that are associated with the east side of the station. So the long ramps come down and any short ramps going up to that platform. Next, please. After those are down, we can demolish the platform on the east and the west side while the east side stays open and build it back to the high level with some associated ramps from the grade up to the platform. And then we could uh, put in the long ramps going from the parking lot up to the new bridge and then down to the inbound platform. The permanent stairways would be put in and the temporary ramp would be removed. Next, please. And then the uh, overhead catenary, which was moved, could be put in its permanent location. And then the west end of the station could be opened. I'm going to turn it back over to Naya and we'll talk about schedule and milestones. Thanks, Karen. So for a schedule of milestones, the 30% design was submitted in November 2020 and approved. We currently are progressing towards the 75% design, which we expect to finish in the spring of 2021. We'll have another design public meeting in the summer of 2021, and the 100% design submittal will be in fall 2021 for completion. Construction is to be determined currently. Next slide. For our cost estimate and budget, the 30% cost that we have for construction design of South Attleboro is $48 million approximately. The current available funding is 7 million. That's for the station design, some parking lot improvements, safety inspections, and the pedestrian bridge repairs. The construction budget is $41 million approximately, which we will see future, future federal funding for. Next slide. 
So as many of us know, on February 26, 2021, a new field condition was discovered by a contractor that resulted in the closure of the South Attleboro station for further inspection. The station is currently closed and will remain closed until further notice. Alternative service is available at Attleboro and Providence stations. Parking passes are available through GATRA. There is direct bus service through RIPTA from South Attleboro to Providence station. And I'm going to turn it over to Angel Donahue for, for some additional information. Thanks, Nyan. Uh, so uh, the MBTA, uh, or we would like to just uh, announce to folks that we will, uh, for those that uh, purchased a monthly pass um, prior to March 1, um, the Zone 7 pass uh, will be accepted at Providence Station, uh, uh, recognizing the difficulty that some folks have been dealing with uh, with the sudden closure of the station. In addition to that, we've also uh, engaged our parking team, uh, and I'm happy to report that there are nine folks that have monthly passes uh, for the South Attleboro Station. Um, our parking folks have reached out to those nine individuals, and they will be getting a full refund for the month of March. And again, uh, I just like to reemphasize that it, the, the the Zone Seven pass would only be will only be accepted if you purchased it before March first, um, and through the month uh, for the month of March. Uh, and same with the parking. So uh, uh, I hope that um, um, that helps alleviate at least some of the confusion that folks have had to deal with the last week. Nayan, back to you. Sounds good. Next slide. So again, for our next steps, we'll be progressing the design to 75%. We expect another design public meeting in the summer of 2021, and we'll continue to engage stakeholders and municipalities throughout the design progress in order to actually incorporate feedback. Next slide. I'm gonna hand over to John Nolan for public outreach. Thank you, Diane. Uh, I wanna remind everybody that you can go to mbta.com South Attleboro Station if you want more information. Obviously, we're gonna have a question and answer period here and you'll get information. But if you think of something uh, later and you wanna reach out there, you can. For service information about the MBTA's Forging Ahead plan, you can go to mbta.com Forging Ahead. Uh, at, the MBTA, at the South Attleboro Station website, you can also sign up for updates or you can send us an email with a question that comes up at so station at mbta.com. So, and that, that is our, so we're gonna go into our Q&A session right now. Uh, just remind everybody, I see we have a couple of questions, a few questions in the Q&A and we'll go to those first. You're all invited to, to type your questions into the Q&A uh, area down the button down the bottom. We have four now, so we're gonna to go to that, but I'm gonna remind everybody, we did have a few people that joined us by telephone. If you want to be recognized, you can dial star nine and uh, I will call out the last four digits of your phone number and unmute your audio when it's your turn. Uh, in addition, we do have the raise hand function. So if you'd like to raise your hand, uh, we will go through uh, the attendees and, and uh, make sure you're recognized and have an opportunity. We'll, again, we will uh, unlo unlock your microphone and allow you to um, speak that. So now we'll go to some of the questions and answers we have in our Q&A box. Yep. Andrea Alawadis uh, asks, one of the dangerous things about this station is access from the east parking lot to the stairs. How will safe passage be accommodated during construction? There is no pedestrian walk under the bridge. Also, does the new design include better access from the Rhode Island side of the Newport Ave Bridge? So I'm gonna defer this question to um, Joe Maliaco, Michael Baker. Hey, thanks, Diane. So I would say right now we're still considering um, construction logistics for you know when, when things are under construction. We don't have the exact answer yet for accommodating PEDs uh, through that area during construction. It's something we're considering and we'll have a better answer a little bit later on. Um, in terms of access uh, for the Newport Ave side of the bridge, that's another thing we're currently assessing, um, you know, potentially looking at another access point from the Rhode Island side. Um, but for now, again, for 30%, I don't, I don't think we're ready to, uh, to give a, a full solid answer on that at this point. Okay, okay. thank you, Joe. Um, we have another question that says, are there any plans to fix the current pedestrian bridge? That's a long time to keep a crucial station closed when the Providence Attleboro are already crowded. So with the current plans of the station, we're currently assessing the condition of the pedestrian bridge. 
as of this time, the MBTA is looking into the assessment and seeing the condition of the pedestrian bridge and we'll, we'll communicate to the public uh, regarding the conditions as, the, as we move forward. Okay. So uh, another question was asked by Andrea, does the sudden station closure, will this push the project up as a priority? I'm gonna defer that question to Angel Donahue. Angel? I think Angel may have had to drop off for a second. I can, um, I can take that one. Um, hi everybody, I'm Katie Cho, I'm the Chief of Capital Delivery. Um, so uh, South Attleboro Station is a priority. We are currently going through our CIP process um, and looking at what funding is available. So um, we're clearly concerned with needing to close the station early. So we, um, it is a, it's a priority for us and we are looking for funding. Um, we just don't have any answers yet as to whether we will be able to find it sooner um, than what we had originally thought we would be able to. Thank you, Katie. We appreciate that. And, and as information becomes available, we put on the MBTA website, the project website, and through social media, and of course, you know, uh, distributed to, to commuters to make sure people know what the status is. Uh, Don asked, I live behind the station, and it's loud already. My concern is it being louder. Um, now, is it possible to put up a sound barrier wall for the residents that live there? Is that part of the project? Currently with the project, we do not have a plan to put up a sound barrier. However, during construction, which is a couple of years away, the we will include notification to the public when we do some major construction portions of the project. And the MBTA will notify the residential area at least one to two weeks at a time. Thank you, Nyan. And I did notice that, that the, the proposed design, I know it's still evolving, uh, did have some curtain walls in behind the the so at least the the voices on the platform and stuff there will be some some a little bit more structure between the neighborhood and the station if not a sound wall itself uh donald asks are materials going to be used that are rust proof for the safety and looks and preventing future deterioration i wanted to refer that question to um joe maliaco and karen sure so um we definitely will be using materials that um um, are good in, in terms of maintenance and uh, better materials than that are currently there. Um, and uh, there are a lot of guidelines that we have to follow uh, for the MBTA in terms of the types of materials we use so that the station will last for a long time. So the answer is definitely yes. Excellent. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Andrea asked, will the next phase of the design be released to the public for review and comment? And maybe Nyan, you can talk about where we are in the design process. I know that we're scheduled to have a public meeting later in the process and uh, how that will work. Absolutely. So in the design progress, we are at 30% design forwarding to 75%. We'll be having another public meeting uh, at the 75% design submission completion. Um, during that time, we'll definitely get common feedback from the public via that PDG meeting. Thank you very much. Another written question we have is from Laura, and it is alternative tra is alternate transportation being provided from South Station to Attleboro Station. And um, I can, you know, I'll defer that to you, Nyan, but I do know that there are some connections with Gatra and Ripta, but uh, perhaps you can elaborate. Absolutely. So the MPTA is currently not providing alternative transportation from South Attleboro Station to Attleboro Station. However, there is a direct connection from Ripta to Providence Station, and Attleboro Station is also not far away from South Attleboro Station. Okay, thank you. So Bob asks, since construction may be as long as a couple years away, is, will there be a temporary replacement pedestrian bridge so the station can be reopened earlier? We are currently assessing the current condition of the pedestrian bridge and we'll communicate to the public our findings as soon as they arise. Okay, thank you, Nyan. So we know how, we have no open written questions at this time, but I'm looking at the attendees and I see that we have some hands raised and A, uh, I'm gonna say CAR, K-H-A-R-E, 
uh, has their hand raised and could we give uh, them the opportunity? I think, I don't know, Kim, if that, has that been opened or are we on to the next? It looks like Jack Jacoby would has his hand raised. Would Jack like to speak? Uh, yes. Hi. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, you can. Uh, it sounds like we are several years away from having these improvements done, and so I have to say that my concern, uh, as a resident of Attleboro, is that this is unacceptable, uh, and that we need to accelerate the timeline here. Uh, it only puts more pressure on the Attleboro station, which is already uh, a difficult parking area. And finally, I, I'm surprised that we're thinking so small here. It strikes me that the parking area is very small, and I'm not sure why we haven't considered a parking garage for this area. And to make this a fully accessible uh, station for all, all of those who need it. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Well, Nyan, do you have any comments on that, or do we want to speak about the operations? I, I guess uh, I would like, Jack, um, could you, I, I've heard what you've said. Could you let me know your question? Yeah, my, my question is, uh, how many years are we away from opening this? And my secondary question is, why haven't we considered a parking garage uh, as part of this, if we're going to be several years in the future. So I'm going to defer to, um, is Angel on the call? Angel Donahue? Hey, hey, Nyan. Uh, uh, happy to, to take that question. Uh, uh, Mr. Jacoby, that, that's a great question. What I would say is that there's a lot of things that the MBTA is currently evaluating at the moment. Um, we are obviously going through a pretty transformational change uh, in behavioral pattern uh, as a transportation sector. And so um, uh, that's certainly something, something to consider. But at the moment, the T, with the limited resources that we have, we were being very strategic. Um, and I would also add um, uh, that our ridership, particularly in the commuter rail, is considerably down in the models that we have, and not just ours, but those across the country, have shown that we're looking for at least, we're looking at at least another three or four years before we return to even the pre-COVID uh, pre ridership that we had, uh, which was uh, which was about 120,000 rides and, uh, trips per day. Right now we're, we're at about 11% of ridership. Um, and so uh, we need to be, we need to be judicious about how we use our resources going forward, uh, particularly on the capital side. Um, so uh, uh, I apologize, I don't have a better answer, but um, unfortunately that's, that's where we're at at the moment. Thank you, Angel. Uh, I see that Laura Abrams has her hand raised. Can we open her microphone and allow her a chance to join the conversation? Hi, thank you. Um, you know, I asked a question earlier about alternate transportation being provided from South Attleboro Station to Attleboro Station. I'm on um, the Attleboro uh, Disability Commission and we just have some concerns about riders who uh, may be using public transportation to access uh, South Attleboro Station and uh, without transportation uh, at South Attleboro Station, they're kind of left, those people may be left in the cold. I realize that ridership may be down, but uh, typically when there's an interruption in service from one station or another, um, where, you know, there's usually transportation provided at least to another MBTA station so that those riders do have um, an opportunity to take the train where they need thank, to. Thank you, Laura. That's a, a really good question. And, and you know, you, I, I think I know that you're sympathetic to the fact that this closure wasn't anticipated that you know it came up under it so so the t is still evaluating the what the situation is with the existing pedestrian bridge i know that the also conversations have been going on with gatra and ripta and where you um with the accessible um community the whole objective of this project is to make this station accessible but it is a a, a tough time now with the the closure um 
Angel, do you want to elaborate any on, on that a little bit, the efforts being making to communicate with the region and, and, and uh, yeah, those, I would say those conversations, those conversations continue. Um, and I'm happy to, um, uh, to, to have someone from our system wide accessibility team reach out to Ms. Abrams. So if you could just leave your, um, uh, I think we have your email um, uh, through, uh, through this and we'll have someone reach out. Thank you, Laura. I see another hand raised is Andrea Alawanis. I hope I didn't do your, your, your name uh, too badly. Uh, and the microphone's open if you'd like to contribute. Um, yeah, this is, this is gonna sound harsh, but this is like completely unacceptable. People have been screaming about the safety of this station for years. And obviously the MBTA was aware of it because they closed those two sets of stairs probably almost 15 years ago now. So the fact that they let it get to an emergency closure before anything happened is absolutely unacceptable. And to Laura's point, to not have a plan in place yet, you know, it's, it's, we're coming on a week now. These people need to get to work. People literally choose where they live based on MBTA stations. So now these people are out of luck in the middle of the winter. So an emergency plan, you know, these, these plans for the future, like, great. You absolutely should be taking advantage of the fact that there is low ridership right now to do the construction. So that this should be absolutely made a priority. There needs to be a temporary emergency plan in place and the construction needs to be pushed up if you can't accommodate it. Thank you, Andrea. I, I um, appreciate your, your fervor and, and interest and we'll try to keep the, 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 the language clean. Um, Angel, if you want to weigh in on, on uh, where we're going, uh, I'd appreciate it. Happy to. Um, you know, I, I'm certainly those folks that are taking the MBTA now, um, this is a necessity for them. Um, and this is a lifeline. And so we're very, we're very um, sympathetic to that. It is unfortunate that we got to this particular point, but um, you know, we, we, um, we appreciate your comments and uh, we will do everything that we can to try and rectify the situation. And I don't see any other raised hands. I do see some written questions. I'm gonna go back into the written questions now. And Laura also said, pursuant to my prior question, there's concern for individuals who may rely on South Attleboro Station who do not have a car and may be dropped off. Um, do you want to speak about that at all, Nyan? I'm going to defer to Ryan Koholan on that one. Thanks, Nyan, and good, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ryan Koholan, I'm the Chief Railroad Officer for the MBTA in MassDOT. Um, so as far as pass uh, passengers who may be dropped off, at South Attleboro Station. Um, the alternative uh, would be to be dropped off at Attleboro Station, just about six miles away, but also the Ripta bus, uh, which is fully accessible, uh, provides regular service between South Attleboro and Providence Station um, to accommodate all those passengers who would be dropped off at, at South Attleboro. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and a care, I, I don't know if we missed you with your hand raised, but I see you have a typed question. Uh, and, and they ask, when can we again start boarding the train from the station while the project is in process? Is, is there any opportunity in the construction phasing to have that access and have the station opened earlier? I can answer that question. So ideally with the construction phasing, we will have operation of the station both inbound and outbound. Um, although the platform will be limited during, the space will be limited during that time. Um, given the fact that there's some major constructions, there may be some times where we are unable to accommodate that, but for the most part, during the typical construction process, we'll have limited access to the station for the pastures to board inbound and outbound. Uh, Joe, I believe you're on mute. Thank you, Diane. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, a corollary about the alternative transportation. The ride paratransit van refuses to go to South Lattleboro Station, even though Ripta buses do go there. Given this, it seems that given the, that they wouldn't consider rerouting to Attleboro. Has anyone looked into this? And I do know that conversations have I've been privy to with both Gatra and Ripta to try and improve connections is, is underway. Um, anybody like to speak to that? Nine, do you want to direct it? Um, 
I would defer to Angel on this one. Yeah, well, I would say that stuff's still under evaluation um, and uh, because of the nature of the circumstance where we had to suddenly close the station, um, we're still evaluating that uh, and how to make some improvements there. But obviously from a transportation standpoint, I mean, every option that is available in partnering with the regional transportation authorities is uh, foremost and on, on the options to find ways to get people in and out of uh, and, and on, uh, connecting to the commuter rail. I have one more Q&A in the question and that's just a thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't see any more questions in the typed and I will look again, see if there's any more raised hands. Uh, we wanna just say, appreciate everybody's patience with, with this. Um, it, it has been a long come coming in these improvements in stations, make a big difference in, in the, uh, the long-term effect. But for the short term, this is like one of those once in a lifetime projects. And unfortunately it's happening in our, our, our lifetime. So there'll be some growing pains, but we're, 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 this team is working very hard on it. Not seeing any more questions or raised hands. I think we have one. a raised oh, hand. One more yeah. raised hand, I'm sorry. Adam Scanlon. Representative. Mr. Representative, go ahead. Hi, Joe. Hi, Angel. I just wanted to say thank you for this presentation. And I also want to echo the sentiments that were expressed by Representative Hawkins at the beginning of this uh, meeting that this has truly been a team effort uh, from the very beginning. But, you know, I am generally curious when about was the last time, you know, major construction was done at the South Attleboro Station in general? Uh, I do not know the answer to that, Representative. We can get back to you on that. Thanks so much. Thank you. There have been, I believe, some piecemeal repairs, obviously, on the, the, the walkway, but yeah. that has gone on for quite a while. Um, but major construction, I, I, we will definitely get back to you. So that seems like we've exhausted everybody's questions and, and, and uh, there's nothing more in the So I'm gonna turn it back over to Angel to close out. I will say from my part, thank you. We appreciate your patience, your patience with the team. And this is a challenging time. We'll get through this challenge and uh, looking forward to improve service in the long, long term. Angel. Thank you, Joe. Uh, and just on behalf of the team, thank you so much for uh, to everyone for, for joining us today. Again, we really appreciate everyone's patience um, throughout this uh, throughout this process, uh, and we look uh, to continue to work with with your uh, with your elected officials uh, and folks um, to to get to uh, to a quick resolution to this uh, uh, to the station. So again, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to working with you guys in the future. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.